any more info on on Rian after the weekend? I don't don't expect there will be a no, lot. No, not another bit. We know it's hamstring injury. Uh, no, I've just just been on with Steve there. Steve just asked me the same. So no, we. In terms of me saying it's this type of injury, how long? No, we don't know yet. In terms of the wider picture, I know we touched on it at the weekend, but has football changed that much? Is there now kind of too much expected of players with the amount of football and training that's on them? Is that potentially one of the reasons why you are getting a bit more injuries? It is, yeah, across the board, not us, I'm sure across the board it is. Um, the workload's big, I think that's why you need the squads to, to use. Um, the way football's changed, like I said, from between 2000 and in 2010, the number of sprints and the, the, the top speeds, um, sprint distance in, in, at the top end of football went through the roof. In the last 10 years, I've, I've not seen the, the change, but I know it's more again. But yeah, it's changing. So in, if you look at the trends and the different type of injuries, that's changed over time as well. Um, you know. Um, a lot less and, and rightly so how it's refereed and we've took a lot of the bad tackles out of the game gradually through the decades have changed um, but they've been replaced by other types of injuries um, which is the result of how physical the game is now. For you though it must be, we, we talked about the kind of difficulties that, that your job in, has now managing this side of it with so many players and the kind of regularity of it and dealing with their mental kind of side of it must be a big part too because you know the, these are big players that, that you're missing for a short term or even a longer term yeah look, I'm not going to lie and say of course you're gutted when you're missing players I said it all the time don't I want them all there I'd rather have the headache of having a conversation with someone on a Friday and saying they're not making the squad because of every chance of making the next one and we've got a better chance of, of winning and we've got everyone fit and available and every player would rather me be saying that to them than, than be sat in a physio room injured so of course I'm not. I want that, but I think uh, I'm fully aware of the individual player at this moment. Like with Rian, how hard he's worked and coming back and, and getting an injury. Reese getting an injury, missing the World Cup and his rehab. Lowe getting up to top speed and flying, and then I'm well aware and and I can really put myself in their position. And I think it's important to do that and not. I'm not going to feel negative towards someone who's working so hard and. I want them back fit, and I understand how difficult it is when they're in that position. Um, and, and I think by doing that, they realise how much we do want them fit, and how much they're needed by us, and they, they get all the support to get back. Is there anything that, that you're looking at from a club perspective in terms of process around what you do and how you train and what they eat or what they're not that, that you're looking at as potentially just, contributing we, factors? No we, no, we just had to change a lot in the last few weeks because of the, how light we've been on numbers, like how much training we've done, we've done, yeah, wrapping lads in cotton wool really because they've been playing so often. And like I say, you've got the one when you are playing this often and the numbers now in, in, and how physical the games are when you're playing, trying to play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Yeah, looking after them and keeping the fingers crossed that they're going to get through till we get the reinforcements back. Um, because as I said, with the, with the amount of those contact injuries had, and, and we've, we've been going with the same sort of 15 players, uh, yeah, it's put a lot on, on a lot on a lot of individuals. And Els picked up his fifth booking now, so I imagine from that perspective, good that Robinson and Stevens both got game time at the weekend. Can they start if needed tomorrow? Yeah, and Kieran's back as well, so we've got, like I said, we're welcoming them back. We've got Flecky a few weeks down, so. We're gradually getting the bodies back. We're, they're not up to the levels that they want to be at, and we want them to be at in terms of, you know, if they'd have been playing all season. We know that. We have to understand that. But to have them in and around the squad, to be available to start or from the bench, gives us that opportunity now with the five subs to get 45 minutes out of plays, 60 minutes out of plays, and bring on a natural replacement. In terms of your goalkeeping department, that's where's Fodringham's suspension done? Does he come straight back in at Bristol? Into the squad, yeah. How do you assess Adam Davis's kind of three games that, that he's had and what he's done? Yeah, listen, I'll, I'll please for Dave on Saturday. And, and, uh, obviously, we, we conceded that first goal against Norwich, which you know hurt him, hurt us. Um, but I think I said at the time that there was a one moment where I, I was just relaxed about him and his performance from then on. There was a ball over the top and he 
he makes a great decision to come out, cushions a header to an L and, and the danger's gone and from that moment I thought, brilliant, he's over it. And then he goes and saves a penalty later on which was good and then put in a, and pleased he was able to then put in a strong and a, keep a clean sheet in the, in the game against West Brom um, to show everyone what he's about and because that's why we brought him here. So, yeah, I think in those three games now, he's it's the first football he's had in a long time. He's going into a World Cup and, he, and he's shown everyone what he can do. Has he done enough to stay in the side? I have to see. Okay. Why would I tell you who's going to be in our goal? Seriously. It's worth an ask. Yeah. You never know. Um, in terms of any other knocks, is there the squad otherwise what we expect? Is there anyone else back or any other knocks? We're carrying stuff, yeah. We're carrying stuff well, as we are all the time. So, as I said, we've the last couple of weeks we've done very little. Last week, nothing until the Thursday, Friday. Uh, similar yesterday and today. So, we're carrying things, but we'll just keep, they like say, getting people up, to, up and, and out to play. and because these are big four games for us. Clearly one of those players that is managing something is Ollie McBurney. We know about his, his hernia issue, but from kind of a wider perspective with him, he went 40 plus goals a games without scoring. He's now mm. got seven and 11. What, what's impressed you about the Ollie McBurney that, that's playing in your squad right now compared to maybe the Ollie McBurney that we've seen previously? I don't know, what was, can I say that I said? It's... He's showing you what he is. You know what I mean? He's, he, that previously wasn't him. He was letting himself down, and and it's not. I think I said that after the weekend. It, it's not the goals that have led to a shift. It's him that's led to the goals. It's a shift in him and his approach to everything. That's uh, yeah. That's, that's led to uh, led to the goals. He's done it himself. He's made a lot of changes. Responded well, um, and I think he's got the bit between his teeth again, which is great to see. And from that perspective, he's you know his all-round attitude. There seems to have been a, a switch that's been flicked in a way with him, where he hasn't lost who he is clearly because he, he doesn't want to lose that that side of his of his game. But mm. maybe there's an extra focus in there, maybe about what he wants to achieve with himself. Yeah, and I think that can uh, be dialed in even more and. We can get him even better at that. Listen, he's growing up. Everyone goes through. Everyone's careers like that, or both on and off the pitch, in your personal life, in your professional life. Everyone, and that's forgotten when you're judging people in the 90 minutes. Um, getting that balance right is key, and, and getting people in, in the right space is key. And, and, and uh, listen, he's in a good place. He's doing well. We're really pleased with him. But I still think there's more, and I think that everyone will start to see more. Is he the best player in the division at defending corners? Well, that, that role we, that we give him, he does it very well, yeah, very well. And, and I say all the time, so, listen, not, not Oli defending that, that space, whether it's Oli Norwood defending the near, if you're a marker, if you're a man on the edge, you have to be able to do your role. So play and speak all the time, it's been spent a lot of time with the younger players, getting them to understand this. Because if then I need to make a decision in game, and I think someone may cost us at that, they won't be going on. Likewise, if you think thinking someone's very good at defending a set play or with good set play delivery, and you need, then they're more likely to be on. And if it's a toss-up for the starting 11, and then it comes down to the real fine margins, then it's going to be who you trust in certain roles. So it's vital, it's absolutely vital. You've got to excel in, excel in every department. And if, and if the ball's out of play for 30 minutes in a 90-minute game, that's how important your restarts are, you know? In terms of his strike partner at the moment, Illiman and Jai, I know that he's got a decent amount left on his current deal, but do you now have to start thinking about a new deal with how much he's impressing and how much interest there yeah, will be in, is in ones. him? He's been one of the ones who, yeah, conversations. How much would you like the club to get that sorted, ASAP? Because clearly there will be people interested in January. Yeah, definitely. Everyone's got to want it to happen, you know? It's not, conversations are ongoing and they're not, it's not simple. So, yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't expect anything to be done soon. In terms of Illiman, there's clearly some aspects to his game that he's, he's improved on greatly and he's, he's excellent to watch at the minute. But from your perspective, what are the kind of little bits and pieces now that he can improve on and work on and add even more to his game? Well, I think of late, and, I, and I think I've said many a times how much I push him and want, different, and want more from him, 
I think of late, there's not too much more I can ask in terms of his work rate, uh, his understanding, um, his bravery to get on the ball. And he's, he's showing what he can do. So the, the challenge is to keep this level, but maybe just produce even better moments, you know, because he can do it. There's a moment in this in which I was really pleased with against West Brom. Uh, he, w he wins the ball back, he looks after the ball, he actually stands on it while the lad's trying to get the ball off him, looks after it. Little trick between two players, and then he makes a simple pass. And that, that really pleased me, because sometimes that might have been then another trick, another, and everyone's buzzing, the crowd are delighted, but then we lose the ball. So that, thing, that really pleased me um, in the game of the day, because it was unbelievable what he did to win the ball back, unbelievable uh, moment of skill with the ball, which I don't think anyone else on the pitch would have done. And then it was the right decision at the end of it, you know? So I think he's playing at a real good level now. And how much as a partnership are they really complementing each other and really starting to build that, that understanding that can probably bring out the best in both of them? You know, they're different, but, but I think good players can play with anyone, so I'd expect them to be whoever they're going with, to be able to um, link with the strike partner, to, to still perform what they do, what they bring to the party. But I think they've both got real good physicality, which is underestimated, particularly in Illinois. Um, but we've got aerial threat with all and they both can look after the ball which is big for us when we want to play into the front men and, and at the minute they're both scoring goals so it looks like they're doing a lot of things a lot of things well Bristol City next some thoughts and views on them bit of a mixed bag after essentially like yourselves a, a really good run around August September time yes yeah, started well at the, the playing some good football um, so like pleasing on the eye to watch. Uh, yeah, a couple of changes. Sometimes we play with a three-man midfield. Sometimes we play with a two and a ten. Um, certainly a threat on the counter. With and got willing runners in behind. Seems to be Naki Wells, Conway, or Semenya. Um, yeah, so we we know that they've got good threats. Um, I know Nigel had to change the team a lot the last game with illness and such. So whether the players come back in, I'm not too sure, but. I would still expect the, the three centre-backs, um, the willing runners of the front two, possibly a ten or a three on midfield, like I said. So, yeah, I don't think too much will change in, in the style. We'll just have to wait and see what personnel um, he, can, he puts out. As a fellow championship boss, are you pleased to see Nigel Pearson getting some, some time to work with them? Because results haven't always gone at, at times for him. He has had difficult spells, but you know he's had 18 months now and mm. they seem to be making steady progress. Yeah, and I don't know what he, Nigel's remit is in the club, but if I was from the outside, you say about your time, well, from the outside it looks like uh, there's been a change of approach to recruiting maybe from l spending less, like recruiting from lower down, putting a bit more emphasis on youth. So, so a lot more has come from the academy, a lot more has come from lower leagues, and Nigel's trying to get them in the team with then some good experience, King, James, those type of lads. Uh, so, yeah, they've got some good players who've been really good at this level and higher and then uh, trying to recruit to as most are doing now to make money on those players lower the wage bill and if that is the approach then the expectation has to be in, in line with that so yeah Nigel being there seen it done it at this level and higher um, and, and knows all how to every way in, in which to create that type of squad so yeah for me it looks like a really good fit from the outside that's, that, this is just my opinion of what I'm seeing now I, I don't know if that's his remit maybe totally different but, but that's the way it appears so it looks like he's doing a, a real good job at that and finally from me clearly there's plenty of time left in the season but four games now until the World Cup break how, how important is this little spell now in trying to go in there with, with some momentum and really build on what he did at the weekend at West Brom yeah every game for the, the, yeah, every game. We get, every game's important. This, these four games for us is managing these, this squad through it, which is important. That's why I said it's important for us to maximise the chances of picking up points in all these games. Um, because, because nothing's really going to change in terms of the players coming back. Um, it, so it can only get worse, if you know what I mean. So we, uh, yeah, that's why, why it's important. Without lowering expectations, without lowering standards. We're still trying to win every single game, which we can do. And we know the challenges of it, but it's, it's something we've been 
Yeah, listen, not just this season, last season, something we've had to do and we've, we've, we've been all right.